The Jeep Cherokee is today on Autogo Fuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. With Thomas, welcome. 20 centimeters shorter than the big brother, the Grand Cherokee, is the just <laughs> Cherokee. And um, it hasn't been available in the European market for quite a while, overall ex existing since 1974. And now with 2014, 2015, again, for example, also available in Germany. And now at our friends in the US, this one is also very familiar. And we're going to take a look at the exterior, interior and the driving experience. And as we've also here at Autogrill driven the Grand Cherokee and also the Jeep Renegade, we also draw some small comparison to the other Jeep models and where this one is really sitting. So let's see what this one here has to offer. Jeep Cherokee has the most unique face of all the Jeep models at the moment, at least I think so. And the reason is because we don't use all the classic elements. For example, we don't have this very steep front grille. We have a slightly curved front grille. You see, there's a step in here and that makes it more, you know, normal car-like, not that really that very strong off-road car feature. Same here with those very slit eyes and um, more twinkling eyes. Other Jeep models are really huge or maybe the, this classic round style as we've seen with the Jeep Renegade lately for example. Some of the very true Jeep fans might say hmm, that's not the real deal for me. Um, I, I also have mixed feelings about it. Yes if you look at the really true Jeep design layout it's not coming that close to it. But then again, it has a very modern look and someone who wants a very contemporary design will then again more be content with that one. The side profile then again is a rather classic. You see everything looks a little bit angular, also the trapeze wheel arches. Oh, there's a little bird. Have you seen it? Nice. And 17-inch um, alloys are from standard equipment. These ones here are 18-inch, a little bit bigger, but winter tires look a little bit balloon-like. They are actually also a little bit polished, but you know, the Jeep also has to be a little bit dirty, so they are not polished anymore. Let's take it that way. See, steep window line that also offers us much space on the inside and four meters 62 in the length of this car. As I said, initially 20 centimeters shorter than the Grand Cherokee, but you still already have a lot of space on the inside, I can promise you, so far. So, especially now for European customers, this one is kind of a way to go because it's not that huge on the outside, but still offers you also a lot of comfort on the inside. What about the pricing, by the way? In Germany, this one here starts at 33,000 euros. That's 15,000 euros less than the Grand Cherokee. So a huge difference. Big motivation not to go for the Grand Cherokee. In the US, however, only 7,000 bucks difference between Cherokee and the Grand Cherokee. Then you might think about, hmm, you know, whatever. And the Jeep Renegade, by the way, here in Europe, about 19,000 euros. Well, definitely cheaper, but then, I mean, also same price in the US. So I think if you're searching for the best price performance deal, this is maybe the Jeep Renegade in Europe then, but then in the US, this one here at 23,000 euros is hardly more expensive than the Renegade. So in the US, I would never go for the Renegade. Definitely pick that one if you want the best price performance Jeep and still a very modern car. There was the little bird again, maybe you see it. Seems like our reviewing part here. The 
Now looking at the rear, most remarkable thing is here, the taillights, they have this 3D look because they seem to pop out of that. It's been a quite contemporary design and not really a very classic one and I think that's also the whole scheme about this car. It's more contemporary in design, not that very much as classic Jeep style. It might be a little bit polarizing for Jeep fans especially. Therefore I want to hear your opinion. Maybe if you're a Jeep fan or not, tell me your opinion about the exterior of the car here right now. One little detail that's leading us to the interior. We don't have a heated screen in the front. Well, but partially, let's say, because here you see this yellow area and this area is heated. It's the area directly at the wipers, so you don't have a fully heated screen, but at least in the lower part here that the wipers don't get stuck to the windscreen. I think it's very good. Of course, it's again better to have a fully heated screen, but that creates more costs. And sometimes some are a little bit irritated by the lines that are going inside the screen here. But that one is one solution here, it's on both sides. Let's get inside either with this key here, that's a key, quite nice, open, close or for the hatch. Other possibility we have the keyless entry here and then you can just open the car or close it here with that button and then, well, there it is, <laughs> let's open again. Okay, let's take a look. This one here is the limited equipment. The first two lower equipments have cloth seats as it should be. Then. Starting with limited, you get the genuine leather, which you shouldn't go for. And then Trailhawk has also leather automatically. But everything else we see is not necessarily from genuine leather. And we have some very nice emotional features, definitely. I do like the color of the seats, definitely. That is, that is really great. And um, we also see contrast stitches starting, for example, also at the middle armrest. And um, if you take a look at the steering wheel, there we can, well, don't have those controls, but you have a very thick steering wheel as we used from a Jeep. And everything, if you take a basic layout look, reminds us a little bit already at the Grand Cherokee, its greater brother. Inside of the doors, I really like that we have a lot of solid elements, for example, also the door handles here from the inside, very solid, feels, feels really good. Also got another contrast dishes here and real wood. That one feels really great because it's matte wood, feels very natural. Storage space here, for example, can come something cover your head here. You can put it in right here. But also, also, you know, some bottles you can put that one in here. Then let's get inside and it's very easy to get inside. A very upright seating position. Got the seat very low here right now, and already I got this command view and well, you don't feel like, you know, in a kind of small compact SUV, you feel like you would be already in a bigger SUV because of this very high position. Here in this trim low, we also have everything electric up and down in the front and also for the back of the seat and lumbar support electronically. At least for the driver's seat, the co-driver seat is not electric, but I will soon show you it also has a special reason why it is not electric. Look out for that one. Then, as I said earlier, thick steering wheel, but for a Jeep, for an off-road car or off-road style car, this is also really fitting and the best feature here, which I would always order, this can be heated. I'll show you the function very soon. See, already when I got my gloves on here, no problem, because all of the buttons at the steering wheel, they are really huge. And if you have, like, let's say, thick fingers, also no problem. You can always hit a button. Um, we have seen that differently at um, some points. And then I also will show you some very emotional features, some nice little elements. Um, for example, here, since 1941, you know, 
or the, the Jeep founding date, it says here on the steering wheel, or um, at the front of the window, we can see it here, there's a small uh, silhouette of a Willis Jeep in the front of the window. So very nice elements they've added here. Or um, if you look at the RPM meter, how the red area is marked. And I really like that I have paid attention to detail and the overall build quality has really improved in comparing to other older Jeep models and um, I really really like that. The dashboard by the way is um, from black plastic. It's a little bit softened up but it's pretty much fine and you know to create this kind of leather look which is you know okay when you create a leather look you also have contour stitches on top of the dashboard. By the way here is another storage space just hidden inside here. Nice solution. There you have the basic overview again from that perspective and you see a lot of resemblances to the Grand Cherokee definitely. It's just that the middle console, you know, the Grand Cherokee, it's let's say more plain. Here it's a little bit elevated and that fits to the outside front grille we've seen earlier where we have all this curved structure and we can see that here in the elevated middle console, very interesting concept. I will also turn on the ignition that you can see the infotainment screen and you see at startup, we directly have um, the seat heating and um, heated steering wheel. Um, well, doesn't work when it's you know when it's not turned on the engine. I can I can do that. See that now turning on it now, and then you can press seat, heated steering wheel and also seat heating because you know getting in the car really cold. Start the engine directly. Hit that before the system switches to everything else, sound, set nav and so on. Um, so it's a very nice solution, a little element I thought about, okay, how we, can we make the, the everyday driving experience a little bit more comfortable. Well, then later on, of course, you can always browse the menu and I've left the engine on now because this controls heated scenery or heated seats and also vented seats is also possible. Not at the same time though, in some cars it is possible but then two levels each for heat and um, also right side vented or heated only available in the top room. But if you pick cloth seats, most of the time you neither heat, need heat, heating nor cooling, but heated steering wheel, you will always use that in winter, um, I'm telling you. So it's separate for, for those um, heating controls and the rest of the climate. Then you can also jump back to that one here again. But then you here you can control where the vents are coming from. You can um, control it here digitally that way as well. But and that is also quite nice. We'll soon take a look at the lower part of the console. You can also still do that manual as for the climate controls. Set nav that's like here, as we've seen from the map. The reaction times are quite okay. The visual side of that one, why not? Um, it's not the most most you know, modern display, definitely not, but I think it's intuitive also if you pick to the phone. Pair phone, yes, you can directly pair to the Bluetooth then. Media, you can, you can uh, play your music from your stream, your Bluetooth music then, or just a radio station. I'll be your main James Bond. Oh yeah. No, I don't want to hear that now. <laughs> so, or go to settings. Um, you can also set the language um, of the display and so on. So everything quite intuitive. I really like it as it's really easy to control and there's also a button in below that you can always turn it off and tap it just to turn it on again. And below here we can adjust the volume also right here and this is the button here to turn the screen off by when it's um, very dark outside that might help uh, for your eyes and um, temperature can also be just here warmer or colder the AC on and off here and how strong the vents are. So you can either do it in a screen or here, both possibilities. And you don't have to use a touch screen. You can also browse in the screen right here to like higher and lower and um, use this one to enter some of the menus. It's a good solution when driving because a driver, maybe it shakes a little bit while driving and then it's better to hold on here than to use the touch screen. And left next to the steering wheel, you not only have the button to open and close the tailgate, very practical solution, here you can also adjust the brightness, not only of the instruments, but also about the touch screen. And um, if you turn it up and down, and then both screens react, and that is a good way to adjust the light, you know, when it's dark or bright. 
That one here, by the way, is equipped with rubber floor mats. You can take a look inside. Um, you see, they're already a little bit dirty because you know, we're in the wet grassland here. And, but the good thing is, and you see, I also got the brush ready here for that because that's a very easy system. You just have to detach it here. It's um, um, two arrows kind of fixing it. And you see the, the underground really sticks it to the ground of the vehicle. That's a really good solution. Then you see if it's wet, you just shake it off and um, maybe use use the brush and uh, or these rubber mats can also easily be cleaned just you know with rinsing water but maybe um, next to your house you can just um, use um, something you water your plants with or whatever and just spray it all over and that's a very good solution in um, bad weather conditions in general of course for winter times and they can be changed here very quickly and fixed tight again rest of the storage spaces here classic glove box not too much space here inside and then we have some little space in front here also usb aux sd and 12 volt power supply then holders here for beverages this is rubber and can be adjusted really keeps the bottle tight it is very well done and then the middle armrest is split here you can also get some inductive loading station for your smartphone. Second split in here. Put the smartphone here. 12 volt power supply as well. Another USB port. And this is for your CDs upright here. So overall, again, solidly built and oh, quite reasonable storage spaces we have here. And we have a huge automatic shifting lever and well, again fits to the solid impression of the car ZF 9-speed automatic converter gearbox and the terrain select different driving modes we have I will explain that one later in driving parts because we'll also have a small soft off-road driving part look out for that later on in the review and what we have here this is the electronic handbrake I usually prefer manual ones but these ones are of course you know reduce the space that is needed in the interior they also have advantages and the central instruments, take another look at that one. Analog, right and left, classic. And then in the middle, it's a digital screen. And I really like the background because it is, has this checkered, so let's say brushed aluminum background. Um, I can soon show you that. Let's turn on the acceleration once more. There it is. Nice effect as well. You see it gets illuminated then. Let's see, it can also change. So in the middle, there it is, this background I was talking about, and then you can browse different menu, vehicle info, for example, and also the driving assist, fuel economy, trip info, I'll show you that as well. Consumption went a little bit up now, but you can also score seven liters on the one kilometers. That's, that's no problem. So audio, for example, you can show everything in here, but usually I have the speed in here with the no digital speedometer. And the rear view camera, you see the resolution is really bad. And we have found that one with a lot of Fiat Corporation models. Their rear view cameras just have a bad resolution. The screen is quite huge for that one, yes, but really need better camera resolution. So really hard to figure out where and what. The angle is quite okay. I can see enough. I just need a better solution. Let's get in the rear. And one big advantage of this car is that you also got the upright seating position in the rear and so it's more comfortable than some of very high class luxury sedans you would imagine because then you don't have the sleeping position here, upright seating position. And even if I want meter 90 in height, um, if I'm driving, no problem with knee space. We don't have a panoramic roof here, so I also got enough head space. So really very comfortable feeling here for the rear passengers. Your seatbelt comes here. Some people had some kind of hassle to, to find a seatbelt um, entry level because maybe someone is mixing up it was the middle seatbelt that might happen but other than that really comfortable position here definitely and uh, one of the best cars as for this length to sit in the rear I think so I would just start relaxing here right now.
And there's also a power supply, real power supply here in the rear. We would have to use it in adapter here, but our friends in the US can directly plug in here. So there is the middle seat belt and then you plug it in right here. Um, <laughs> looks like some would be seeing it, which would be very small. But you can also just use it as a beverage holder here inside. Good luxury feature as well. Then you can also adjust the back seats. For example, this puts them further in the front. Two third, one third split. Make the rear space larger or just enlarge the space you have here for your knees. And they can do the same with the two third bench right here. And then you can also flip the seats with this lash already here, um, but then you see this strange attachment here again, and I'm not sure why they're doing this, if it's supposed to be a little bit cleaner solution here, but I'm usually rather annoyed by those solutions, then you have to declip the seat here, then you can put it to the front, you see already here it's really flat, and you can also touch it here again with this another lever to put it up in it. So you have different solutions for the seats and we already see here it's getting really flexible. And leading over to that, we can really start here because when we put that one down, and then with some electric seats, we had the problem that we cannot put that one flat when you, for example, want to transport a, let's say, surfboard or something like that because the seat here in the front can be put all the way down and then we really have a flat surface from the front all the way to the back if you want to get some furniture at IKEA or I mean you know every automotive manufacturers in their adver advertisement they always say oh all of our customers I have surfboards the best mountain bikes and uh, they are 35 super rich have two kids and surfboards and mountain bikes and every car is advertised like that. But no matter what, you will surely find something you will transport here, even if you don't have a surfboard and are some kind of Mazda 30 meter wave uh, surfer. <laughs> now to a very Germanish test. The sound of the door closing. I would say not that good. Doesn't, but you know, is it important to you? Then I can say not the best closing sound ever but maybe you don't care. But let's move on over to the rear. You can either open it with the key or in the front, I've shown you the button, or also press it below here. Let's see if it stops here. Uh, you see, the sensor is also not flexible enough. Um, also when closing, see. Imagine I would be maybe, a, my hand would be head of a child. <laughs> Come on, seriously. Really dangerous, in my opinion. They have to fix it, and um, hardly any manufacturers pay attention to that. Um, the Tesla we tested, that one was actually quite good, and that's for, but here, really not a good result. Let's now check what we have inside, and where well, there's light and shadow. First of all, we have reasonable space. You see here for all our camera equipment, that's pretty much fine. Then the Cargo shade we have. You see uh, directions for storing rear cargo shade. Uh, it's, yeah, it's something like, you know, uh, that you can hide it that way. Okay, it's a little bit weird. I think I'm not sure why they did make made it that big. Because usually when you use it, first of all, also no fixed rails left and right. It's like wobbling around. And then here, and then you got this ending. Well. I'm not sure. Maybe it's, you know, that nothing goes above that level, but I mean, just make it a little bit shorter and it would, be, would really have been better. So this one is one of the weak parts of the car, definitely. But um, I mean, it's also not, not that, that bad. So we can also flip the seats from here if we oh, have some effort. I hope so. Or Yeah, and that's again, I have to detach that one. Let's see if we can really, yeah, there it is. Okay, so, and let's now show you how long we can really make this, this one out. Uh, you see, <laughs> everything is flying around here. 
I just hold it up and then I, you can see how far does it go to the very front. I think that should always be almost be like three meters or something like that, two meters eighty. And that's really a lot of space we can put your tripod or your surfboard, of course. So nice solutions, also very flat area. Everything is very softy, by the way, as well. I really like that. Let's see what's below here, or right and left. Nothing special here. Here we got a nice, the first aid kit is hidden here in a nice Jeep bag. That is a nice solution. And also to fix some bags here, that is possible also. Here you can, uh, you can fix some belts. By the way, the electric opening, to close it again, you can press it here. It's not up there, it's right here. Then, you see this nice rubber mat below that one. We still have a real replacement tire. This is some cleaning kit, but then real replacement tire. Um, some of you really appreciate it. Usually in mm, a lot of modern cars it is left out due to weight reasons, for example. Let's open the hood and, wow, really cool. It's still on one piece and, uh, you know, we have seen some cars where the front part is split to lower insurance costs, and, but here, really cool, nice cover, <laughs> it's really. This is here the turbo diesel, 2.2 liter. In Europe, we also get the 2.0 liter, which we've seen in a Renegade. Don't call, go for that one, it's really way louder. I'll tell you more about the comparison of that one in the driving review, which is coming quite soon. And um, then you can also get a petrol engine. In Europe, you can get the very strong one, the, the, the V6. You can also get that in the US. Um, that's, you know, if you don't care about consumption or if fuel prices are really low in your country. And um, the basic engine for the, you know, our friends in the US is this 2.4 liter petrol engine, um, not a V6 engine, but in general, um, if you have experience with that engine, please tell me in the comments as well, because here we can only get those two diesel versions and the very big Panto engine cannot test the smaller entry petrol engine, but um, I think it will also do quite fine. And if you go for diesel, this one here, go for the 2.2 liter one, and this one is the version with 200 horsepower, and the 9-speed automatic gearbox is also a very special thing and we'll all experience that when we drive the car. All right, let's start with the driving part. Jeep Cherokee, 2.2 liter diesel. As I said, that's the one we got in Europe. We also got the smaller diesel, a 2 liter diesel. We had that one in the Jeep Renegade. And especially for our friends in the US, you will probably usually take this 2.4 liter petrol engine. We don't get that one in Germany. And there's then also a very strong petrol engine available. This, I think it's 3.2 liter V6, very massive. And that one we can also get in Germany, but hardly anyone does because the consumption is quite high. Here with the diesel, we can directly check the consumption. This is a very good overview to scroll through the menu. Everything is very clear, clearly visible in the central digital screen. And for example, I can go to the consumption mode. So let's see. Trip. So I've driven about 250 kilometers now to test it and it says 7.7 .7 liters on 100 kilometers. And for a fairly big car, I think that's okay. I think so. Well, could be a little bit lower always, of course, but I think generally a quite good performance. Well, you don't do racing with this car, but and I've promised you earlier, that we'll also compare it to the Jeep Grand Cherokee and also to the Jeep Renegade, that you can kind of see where this car is as for the driving experience inside the Jeep model lineup. And what I can say, first of all, to the Jeep Renegade and especially to driven the 2-liter diesel. I'm standing here at the traffic light, the 2-liter diesel was really like and this one here is relatively silent so if you go for the Jeep Renegade here, especially to our European viewers, definitely go for the 2.2-liter diesel. You can either get it with 180 or 200 horsepower. That one will not make such a difference but don't go for this entry version with the 2 liter diesel, it's really too loud. This one here is a little bit more cultivated, it's a new diesel engine. And also the 
general insulation is better. That is also the second difference to the Jeep Renegade. The overall sound insulation also just from wind noise from outside is definitely better right here. And then talking about the difference to the Grand Cherokee, of course you do feel that the car is bigger, but not that much as you would probably imagine because here, although we are still, well, we are on the edge from the compact SUV to the full-size SUV segment at least if you get European definitions here with 4 meters 60 in length, you already feel it would be quite big here because you have a very high seating position. I got the seat now at the lowest position because you know I'm almost 190 in meters but even then when you have the seat in the lowest position you already got a very high seating position and I, I do like that because when I buy an SUV I also want this SUV feeling with a command view you sit above the road can see everything very well the visibility is very good to every side because you know, the windows they are very steep and as I said you sit relatively high and and I really like that. So switching the front screen back to the digital speedometer, then I can see the, you know, the current speed very large in the front screen. There it is. And we have a discussion about that. Maybe stay that one in the comments. If you I mean, even if you have a digital speedometer, if you rather read the analog instruments or if you put it speed digital one in the front I would be looking forward to your comment on that one then we have a cruise control in here and the same as I stated in the interior static review all of the buttons here in the review first of all they're from good quality and they're also very huge so even if you have you know rather big hands or big fingers uh, or let's imagine you're driving with gloves which here most of the time you don't have to because I already got now, we've got about zero degrees outside, one degree Celsius, I don't know. Got a heated steering wheel, degrees in Celsius, by the way, <laughs> not Fahrenheit. So I can, but even if I would wear gloves, I can set the cruise control here with the huge buttons. For example, we had it in the Opel or Vauxhall Astra, where most of the buttons were so tiny that, you know, even with you know, hands of my size, I had problems touching some of the buttons right here here it's really no problem so everything's really huge and this is also some kind of this character the Jeep has you know going big even if it's not the, the, the biggest one in comparison also to the Grand Cherokee this one here feels more agile definitely so the Grand Cherokee you'd rather drive slower this one here well it's also relaxing to drive but you feel better when you're now cruising around a little bit or going right and left which is clearly irritating the mini driving behind me now <laughs> and no I'm not drunk and the steering input well it feels quite of natural when you're going very steep corners you have to you know turn the steering a little bit too much to from, from what I feel I think so there could be a little bit more help especially when you are turning in some kind of parking lot and you have to go front back front back again it can be hard a little a little bit of time you know to me it's not a problem but if i imagine now someone maybe is not very strong in the arms and you know we have different different viewers with different expectations of a car and so i can also just state you know how are the characteristics of the car and then you have to decide okay does, is it really important to me this kind of aspect or is this aspect more important to me and well that's basically your decision then. so now we can accelerate a little bit harder Also here that the diesel is grieving and just a little bit, but I think the sound from diesel is definitely okay. And I think this engine is also really fitting for that car because it's not too powerful that you don't you know feel like the car wouldn't be in control anymore. And no matter if on the motorway or in the city, you always have enough power. And we have a bigger part of motorway drive time today. Um, I think Pretty much all of you guys, when you're buying this car, also expect a very comfortable performance when being on the motorway. Now here, for example, when I'm driving on the motorway, I also feel that the car is easier to steer than the Grand Cherokee, obviously not carrying so much weight. And that can be an advantage, I mean, if you think about, okay, 
I really don't care money-wise if I go for the Grand Cherokee or the Cherokee. This could be an argument to go, you know, smaller on purpose for this one here because it's more agile to drive, definitely. But as I said, even when starting out a longer motorway drive, you don't really lack any comfort and therefore I think also in driving the Jeep Cherokee is a very good compromise. Maybe for some of our US or Canadian viewers that, or from Australia that won't really play a role because they say, okay, no, I'm not really limited inside the city. Uh, we have roads are pretty huge. I don't have a narrow basement garage, whatever. Especially in Europe, it's very important that somehow, even if you think, okay, I could afford a very, very huge SUV, it's maybe not the best one to buy because then you always get annoyed by, oh, this doesn't fit there, I have to check out, ah, do I scratch the, the alloys right and left? And here it's really, really easy, let's say it. And um, you can compare it, for example, with the Volkswagen Touareg because, you know, the Volkswagen Touareg is already officially in the full size SUV segment here over but it's one of the smallest inside of that one. And for the Volvo XC60, that one here counts to the compact SUV segment, but it's one of the biggest in the compact SUVs, but it it's really is a, is a smooth transition over that one. So the suspension, generally talking about the suspension, let's fix the camera a little bit here. It doesn't get to shake too much, so. About the suspension, as we expect from a Jeep, it's generally soft and well it's not that soft that you think okay i do lose the contact in the in the corners and oh, the car doesn't lean too much too far to the left and the right so generally i'm really satisfied with that one and also a very fitting suspension for that car transmission nine speed from that f and as we know from the products from that f the converter gearbox they have really good stuff they produce and you almost don't feel the car shifting somehow and that is uh, really what the hell there was someone in another car here at 1 and 30 on the motorway and he was holding three fries french fries out of the window like cooling them down i don't know <laughs> but maybe when um, people watch at us when we drive a car here with camera light, one camera here, one camera there, I was thinking like, oh my God, this guy is totally crazy. <laughs> we had uh, such situations um, before as well. Usually I do trust on the automatic gearbox, but there's also a function when I turn the shifting lever to the left, then I can adjust the gears manually. But it's not like functioning as you would imagine. Now, for example, I'm in ninth gear, shows me in the digital instrument. That's D again, so. But am I really in the ninth gear? Hmm, no, I wasn't, because right now, the ninth gear is the maximum gear the car shifts up to. And it is derived from off-road riding. For example, when you drive down here for a long time, then you define the maximum gear. And I can, for example, shift down, say, sixth gear so the sixth gear is now the maximum the car shifts up to but that can mean that the car shifts down to second third fourth and whatever does the automatic gearbox thing but then taking the second sixth gear as the maximum gear you just have to know that how that works because you know some people driving car were writing or, or, or telling something like ah, the manual shifting here doesn't work at all and yeah, it does work, but it's just another kind of system. But some of you, maybe you are more familiar with off-road riding cars, maybe know some of, of those systems and then you perfectly get along with it. Really like, by the way, I have to stress that again, that the background of the digital instruments in the middle has this kind of brushed aluminum look. Of course, it's just digital fake, but I really like the, like the design of that one. And, some details like the, like these, and also as I shown you earlier, the small uh, Willis Jeep in the front of the of the window. Those details are really what you know, emotional details are, are all about, and I really like that. So, you know, especially the compact SUV segment is a 
definitely a growing segment still because you don't have too much car around you. You can use the car for, for everything still you want to do. Hold on a second, guys. There it is. But then again, you already have a lot of comfort on the inside. And this is really a good compromise. And I think, I wouldn't have expected this, but this one is one of the best compact SUVs I've driven so far because it delivers such a, such a good overall package. Of course, we still have this price problem in Europe over at you guys in the US, our friends from, from the States. Jeep <sighs> is so cheap there in comparison to what we pay here. Unless you buy the Renegade because it's produced in Italy, then you pay you know, not so much money here, but the same amount in the US, which is very unusual. But that's how it goes. How much, like, which way over the pond the car is exported. Very interesting. I can also show you some flexibility, acceleration figure from the diesel, especially as for the motorway driving. Let's see, okay, first of all, switch to the set nav, then I can also see speed is allowed, it says 100 right now. And so, for example, we can do some 80 to 100, and you can see how you know, well, can overtake on the motorway. Let's go now. And that's it. I think you should have seen that in the... That's also a good um, advantage and w that we, we can show you the speed when the digital speedometer is very huge in the, in the middle part of the screen. Overall, the seating position is really comfortable, even if you're on a longer drive and I've driven the car for quite some time now and can't actually say any, anything negative about driving the car because I generally prefer petrol engines, just not kind of the diesel type, but for a diesel, I think it's a really, really good pick, especially when you um, have to pay attention to consumption. Well, right now, oil prices are very low and but who knows i mean it's not realistic at all it was too high when it was realistic before now it's too low who knows what will happen there and uh, well market's playing crazy so if you can just relax by the way the, the restraint head restraint is quite of close to your head and that is also a good feeling when you just want to relax a little bit for a while Talking about Gino and leather seats, you know my opinion about that one. If you're a subscriber of Autoport, if you're not a subscriber yet, hit the subscribe button, please. And problem here again is when I'm driving the car a little longer, even now in winter time, just get stick to the seats and get so hot and rather uncomfortable. But as I've told you earlier, just a limited and trail hawk at those two top trim levels, they have the Gino and leather seats, the other ones have cloth seats and you can easily go by that one and also save something from, from the equipment. Here we get it really full packed. Let's see what else do we have here. For example, we have the lane keep assist. It shows me a small green symbol in the digital screen in the middle. And that one helps me keeping the lane. I'm kind of mixed about those systems. Sometimes they annoy, are a little bit annoying. Let's see if it works here. Yeah, seen that one. Keeps me inside the lane. That can, for example, be a very good help when you are um, maybe very tired and you know the, there are these seconds where you're like, and you know, one second and everything can be over. And so I would just leave it on, even if it, it does annoy you at some time maybe it can really save you in a very very fierce situation that that might work so in the as i've shown you it works pretty well and by the way another emotional feature when you're going well with this car you probably won't go into 5000 6000 rpms inside the red area of the rpm meter but you know it's this the structure how it is these, these red lines and the same with the front windscreen where the heated part is shown over there. I think they've done, especially recently, in the recent Jeep models, done a very good job to reintroduce those kind of funny details where you think, okay, that's good just for love or maybe just a comfortable feeling and really like that. 
especially from the recent Jeep models, I think this one is also one of the most refined so far. Well, it's also kind of belonging to one of the most recent models and of course more cost intensive than the Jeep Renegade. Jeep Renegade runs at a lower budget, being produced as a, as a Fiat car brother. This one here is, I think, what they have to offer, besides of those like top luxury stuff from the Grand Cherokee, but basically you get everything here already. So I really have to say, there's not so much reason to go for the Grand Cherokee anymore, if you look at that, I mean, unless you really want very strong off-road features, definitely. Maybe let's go for a faster right now and see what the suspension does also because right now we are one, one of those very, very limited autobahn parts we have in Germany where you have unlimited speed limit. Hardly happens anymore. And also we got, we have Sunday today and so there's not so much happening on the road. Right now we're driving 150, 160 in that region, kilometers an hour. I can, by the way, also switch to MPH in this. So, especially for all American friends, 93 miles per hour, 150 kilometers an hour. <laughs> That's a good, yeah, it's a good one. So Jeep is really good car for auto fuel because we have an international community and I can also give you the MPH figure. That is some great thing. Sound insulation, well, yeah, I mean, it's not the best car as for the form to expect a good wind insulation when you're driving at higher speeds, really. Let's check the acceleration right now, 0 to 150. There it is. Of course, not an acceleration of a sports car. For this 2.2 liter diesel, I think a fairly good performance. You know, the diesel always brings a lot of torque with you, definitely. So, well, and at 150, the car is still relatively stable. It doesn't feel like I would lose the control because we have an SUV and a rather soft suspension. Also, if I go now a little bit right left, Still got a very good feeling of the car, so also at higher speeds, very nice. And that's also some difference to the Grand Cherokee because it's more set on also off-road riding and a little bit softer from the suspension. This one here still also feels more agile at higher speeds. That is definitely one difference. So overall, in most of those disciplines, we've tested it. Fairly good results here with the Jeep Grand Cherokee. It's really a car you you know, don't want to lose when you've just driven it. And as I said earlier, really offers a good compromise. Maybe to some, as we closed our driving review part, what about negative points? Yeah, as I said, hardly any, but, well, I said it earlier, steering wheel could react better and maybe that you don't need so wide steering angles when you're driving at lower speeds, that would be good. Then when you're facing some very, very annoying bumps on the road, the yeah, suspension could be a little bit better, but just talking, you know, on a very high level. Sound insulation could also be better at higher speeds, definitely. We've also experienced other SUVs where this one had a better solution. Well, and about the materials are talked about that earlier, there could also be still some improvement. So about those points. Well, it's Jeep, so yes, okay, some off-road riding for you, soft off-road riding. And um, I'm just turning to it because we have a little bit of snow, turning the select terrain now to snow mode. And that means when I press the throttle, the car is going gently and also always 
driving in the second gear even from standstill so we don't have too much wheel spin. That definitely helps and you see even if we have some bumps here it's no problem for well it's not the most off-road capable car then you have to go to the Grand Cherokee or maybe the old school the Wrangler uh, but you know for some soft off-road it's really fine. I also have well sport mode that would be next one that is not say nothing for off-road then the gears turn up higher but then I can go to the next one this is sand or mud and it's well not the same as the snow mode because here we also we're not starting a second gear but we still have electronically limited that we don't have too much too much spin because in sand you on the one hand need a lot of power to get out of the sand but then you know just at a limited level again and um, that is kind of a mix in that mode and always in the digital screen I also see a nice visualization in which mode I'm on and here I'm feeling very comfortable here on those uh, grass bumpy grassland and um, suspension does a good job when riding a little bit soft off road and also about the ground clearance I really don't have to be afraid to hit stuff here when, you, when we're just going like these or some of the mud hills we see here um, just you know explore your land and, but if you maybe live in, in, in Tuscany or in the Provence and have a nice uh, cottage house or maybe in Canada or in America this will also serve very well to get up to your house no problem so it's also fun to go some soft off-road here with the Jeep Cherokee as well it should be with the Jeep Now come to the conclusion of the Jeep Cherokee. I think it offers you a very good compromise between size outside and the space you got on the inside. So you don't have the three huge SUV on the outside. You still can get everywhere with it. But then again, you have the space on the inside you have with the most very large SUVs already, even for the rear passengers. Okay, maybe it's a little bit smaller in the trunk capacity, and, but you easily can live with that for the most purpose, definitely very solid build quality I mean it's one of the most recent Jeep models and also not in the lowest budget area so we've seen a lot of good solutions very clever solutions also in the interior and the overall build quality was also very good I think of course we have seen other cars also in the combat SUV segment especially if we talk about the premium cars but then again if you look at the price well yeah in Europe it's not that cheap really and it's already keeping up with other um, way more expensive SUVs that is also a sales problem but especially if you think about um, the US I mean for starting with $23,000 it's really a quite cheap deal for what the car is offering I think then you think um, about other when you think about German prices 24,000 25,000 for Mazda CX-5 also 25,000 um, now a little bit more for the older generation of the Volkswagen Tiguan then this one is already a little bit expensive and um, only you know, placed in a niche market where someone says, okay, I really want to have a Jeep. So it really depends if you're more in Europe or in, in the US about you know, how much is the price. It's a really big difference. But in general, I think the pricing is still okay no matter where you are. And um, a lot of aspects we've got, especially from the driving also, it just felt comfortable when riding the car because it has this mix here about you know having just the right size and the suspension was also quite a comfortable just I noted some small details where you can still improve some things of course there are always some things to improve and we always find something uh, we can tell the manufacturers to um, improve for the next generation of the car but so far I think they have done a really good job here and one of the most important aspects is surely also if you really love the design or maybe want a very classic jeep layout and there's of course some elements of it but you know is the one from the jeep model lineup that is let's say most remarkable be it positive or negative in your view so i want to hear your opinion on the exterior interior and also the driving part of the car and also what you think about the small comparison what we said about the other jeep model lineup where do you see the car and would you rather go for a renegade for Cherokee, maybe for a Compass or for Patriot or for Grand Cherokee and why. Tell us your experience you had or what are your plans. Thank you very much for watching. See you at the next Auto Full episode with Thomas.